senior writer for ESPN, Howard Bryant. Howard, thank you so much for being with us on short notice. And I'm so grateful to have you because you have such a unique perspective. Having wrote the book, The Last Hero, A Life of Henry, can you talk to me about what it was like working on the book with him and, and how you met him? Yeah, well, thank you for this. It's a very, uh, it's a devastating day, obviously. And I remember back in 2005, 2006, when I first wanted to work on this project, and it took forever to try to get Henry to, uh, to even reach him because his camp was so convinced that the only reason people wanted to talk to him was to compare him to Barry Bonds because the, his record was in, in jeopardy of being broken. And I finally got a chance to call him, and it was on Jackie Robinson's birthday. It was January 31st, uh, 2006. And we, we talked, and he, he said to me, I don't understand why you're calling. Nobody, nobody cares about me. No one is in, why would anybody be interested in me? And I said, because you're Henry Aaron. And it was so fascinating because where he was at that point was he was very aware of his accomplishments and he was very clear about his accomplishments, but he had been convinced in a lot of ways that, that this culture didn't have any interest in decency and didn't have any interest in sort of the, you know, his journey. And it was, I, I, the thing I love most about Henry was that he was so aware. He was absolutely in just, he really enjoyed the fact that people did finally respect him and that people did reach him after all he went through in 1974, that the country had reached him and that caught up to his values. And um, he got to enjoy it. And people always thought he was bitter. He wasn't. He got to enjoy this. And he really, really loved the fact that he got to spend the, the, the last quarter century just being a total legend to, to a new generation. Howard, how were you ultimately able to convince him people would appreciate the story that you had to tell about him? How were you able to convince him of that? Well, we were on the phone for about an hour, and I remember the, the thing that kind of did it was I, <coughs> I, I said to him, well, people aren't interested in you because of Barry Bonds. People are interested in in you, period. You're, you're Henry Aaron. Do you, are you, and I was sort of amazed that he was so reticent about it. But I think finally what did it was I, I got to meet him for the first time in New York um, at a signing. And we sat down and for the entire conversation, all we talked about, all we talked about was was Mobile and, and Atlanta and Milwaukee. And he told me this phenomenal story about how much he didn't want to go to Atlanta because of how, you know, he didn't want to go back to the Deep South. And then he sat down with, with Ralph, Ralph Abernathy and Dr. King and Andrew Young, and they told him, you're as important to this movement and to black people as we are. And we need you. We need you to come here. And that conversation, all talking about that, he sort of sat back and he said, ask whatever question you need. It was almost as if his memory reminded him of, yeah, I have a part in this, in this American story. Was he aware at all, Howard, that of kind of how he represented, it's almost like a, a politician pre-Watergate or something, a home run champion pre-steroids era, how he rep what he represented, not just obviously as an African-American who toppled the, I think at the moment he did it, the single most significant record in the history of American team sports, I think by far actually, um, uh, but the fact that he did it, that he eventually came to represent a kind of more innocent time, like before the level of cheating that we saw years later. Was he aware of that at all? Yeah, and I think that's why the title of the book is The Last Hero. That was the last record that, at, to that point in baseball that I felt was really untainted by drugs, that this was the big one. And once this one stopped, people were going to have to look at him very differently. And the fact that I think he wanted to stay away from all of that because he felt like it was a lose-lose situation. He always felt like if I come out and complain about, you know, drugs and sports, then people are going to look at me as if I'm this old man with sour grapes. And if I say nothing, people think that I'm, that I'm tacitly condoning what's happening in the sport. So it's a lose-lose situation for me. But what ended up happening was, was he actually grew even stronger in the minds of people because of what we remember about uh, our own nostalgia and our own sort of innocence, whether it's accurate or not. What did he say to you about how exactly he felt about the whole steroids era? He's completely uh, offended by it. I think that he, mm. 
he he was never he, he never wanted to be in that situation of having to um of having to compare and having to talk about it because he always thought that it was a lose lose for him but he was offended by it he never he, he was offended really by 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 two things one you know one was one, one was the drugs and the other was the fact of, of where the country was going. I talked to him two and a half weeks ago. We were talking about working on another project together. We've been working on a project together. And one of the things that he was really happy about was he was happy that he survived, that he survived the last four years. He, because he talked about, he used to tell me stories about how when, the, when he was little and the, you know, the Ku Klux Klan would come down the street in, in Mobile, his, his parents used to throw him and the kids under the bed. And he used to talk about not wanting to feel like the country was going backwards. And it was amazing that whenever we talked about things, we talked about where the country was going as much as as much as sports and everything else. And I was always fascinated by his ability to talk about these things and not be bitter when he had every right to be bitter. He was just I, I, I just really love the fact if any mm-hmm. if we all get to live if we all get to be eighty six years old, get to live at a place in peace. He was at peace with where he was and where the world was. And that to me is a, is a gift. 